Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news, reviews, and playthroughs. I'm Peter, and today I'm playing through Marvel Champions. I'm so excited, it's New Hero Day! So we got two new heroes, we got Rogue and Gambit. Today I'm going to be playing through Gambit, and stay tuned for another video I have with a Rogue first playthrough and impressions. So if you've never joined us for one of these before, I'm going to play through, it's not my first time playing through this hero, but it's an early playthrough of the hero, and I'm going to give you my impressions of what I've seen so far. Honestly, I've only played him one other time, so we'll see how this goes, uh, but let's get into it. Actually, a couple disclaimers first. Uh, well, number one is if you love Marvel Champions and you want more content, every Friday night we stream live so come join Terrence and I for live playthroughs we do a lot of crazy stuff a lot of modulars we put weird stuff together uh, we try to show hero synergies so we do a lot of two-player plays so come join us Friday night if you're a Marvel Champions fan for that the other thing is these we did get review copies of these packs from Fantasy Flight Games uh, you will notice that this is a digital playthrough and the reason we do this is because it is way easier to see the cards honestly I don't have a great setup for live playthroughs so I am showing this but I did want to put the disclaimer up front that they did send us a copy of it but we do recommend everybody go out and buy them themselves we're doing the digital playthrough just because it is so much easier to zoom in on the cards everything else with the equipment that I have all right so let's talk about Gambit shall we so Remy Lebeau is a three recovery six hand size nine health thief extraordinaire action thwart Exhaust Remy Lebeau and look at the top two cards of the encounter deck. Discard one of those cards, remove threat from the scheme equal to their boost icons on that card. So Remy is uh, interesting, or Gambit is interesting, because you're going to be thwarting from this alter ego side, which really hasn't been a thing that we've seen in the past. And on the hero side, we're going to be doing most of our attacking, stuff like that. So only one thwart here, two attack, three defense. You can charge the card once a turn. I'll actually get a counter out here so I can start doing that basically as an action once per round you can add a counter to here and as an interrupt when you play an attack event remove up to three charge counters from here and those events do one additional damage now i am playing with this pre-constructed deck so let's go ahead and draw our six cards here now i'm not going to go through every card the way i have done in the past but if you want to see all the cards gone through then i do have an unboxing video so go ahead and check that out on our one stop co-op shop stream channel all right, and who are we going to go against today? We're going to go against Sentinel. This is actually one of my favorite new scenarios. It's called Project Wide Awake, where you are fighting against the Sentinel. Just a pretty simple 2-2 two -two tough. One of the interesting things about it is they have this Operation Zero Tolerance. After an enemy attacks and defeats an ally, place that ally face down under here. And if there are number of players plus three cards under here then you lose immediately. Now, normally you could thwart this away, but we are not able to get rid of it. That's part of this Project Wide Awake. You can't get rid of it. But we do have two other schemes that we can get rid of. We've got Mutants in the Mall, which will give us an ally. It'll give us Jubilee. And then we also have uh, Abduction Protocols. When we get rid of that, we will draw a random one. Uh, but both of these give you, well, this one doesn't have victory, but you flip the card over and Jubilee's on the back. This one gives you victory, so they do go out of play once they are gone. But you are just, as usual, trying to defeat him before this loss condition happens. But there is uh, something that's going to accelerate that. Knight of Sent uh, Sentinels, Operation Zero Tolerance, game's permanent. Uh, which again, we talked about, this gains permanent. If there are four cards under there, you lose. But this does not scheme out as usual. After threat is placed here, if at least five threat per player is here, the first player places the top card of their deck face down under Operation Zero Tolerance and then removes five threat per player from this scheme. So bottom line is we're just going to accelerate this more and this is our loss condition. If we ever have four cards under here, we lose. But letting threat get on here adds cards to under there. And again, we just got to defeat sentinel twice as normal all right so let's look at our opening hand oh we got our staff when an enemy attacks gambit exhaust the staff to deal a damage which is nice because you don't have to be the defender or anything else you just get to do it anytime they attack uh you got bishop over here who is an ally to thwart zero attack but you're going to place counters on them after an enemy attacks you you get to place counters on you remove them to do extra damage Rogue, you reduce your cost by one for each charge counter. So I could play her for three turn one because I can add a counter. Passion for Justice, when you spend this card for Thwart event, 
thwart an additional one. Natural Agility. It's a defense card. When you defend against an attack, place a charge counter on Gambit. For each charge counter, you add one to your defense, which is kind of nice. And uh, Breaking and Entering. Play only if you're a spy or a thief. The nice part is Gambit is a thief on both sides. So you could play that on Alter Ego. It does not say Hero. It just says Action. Remove three threat from a scheme. That also lets Black Widow play this card as well. So because she is also a spy. So kind of neat. Uh, we are going to need threat removal from the beginning of the game. So let's go ahead and hold on to that. We're going to get rid of our defensive event. We will hold on to this one because it'll let us remove a fourth threat. I'm not going to hold on to Rogue. She's going to be expensive. I'm going to want to get my staff out as well. No Bishop either. So I'm going to hold on to these three and draw three new ones. Stealth Strike. Deal four damage to an enemy. If it's defeated, remove two threat. Professor X, which can confuse for us and do some thwarting himself. And Beauty and the Thief. Well, we don't need that anymore. That is our team up card, uh, which allows us to deal four damage and remove three threat or four threat for two cost, which is ridiculously good. But unfortunately, not going to be able to play all this this turn. I am going to start out by playing. I'm going to use Beauty and the Thief because, again, definitely won't need that to play my staff which will let me basically attack back when I get attacked or at least plank one damage on. Uh, while I am in Alter Ego, I'm going to go ahead and use my special ability here, Exhaust Remy, and I get to look at the top two cards of the encounter deck. I'm going to discard one of them and remove Threat. So let's look at the two of them. Both of them have stars on them. All right, so one of them is going to be the boost for the attack against me. Let's see which one I want. Uh, attach this to the villain. I don't love that. Plus one scheme. Cost three to get rid of. Let's see if this is better. If target for elimination is attached to an enemy, deal this card to that player as a face down encounter card. Otherwise, basically, it's a zero boost. Yep, I'm good with that. I am going to discard this. We add uh, or we thwart equal to the number of boost icons on here, which is a grand total of zero. Oh, so I'm not going to be able to get rid of both of these, but I think I want to get rid of the acceleration this turn. But I am going to play Passion for Justice, which again lets me re remove an additional threat. So I'm going to discard these two cards to pay for breaking and entering. I'll remove three threat. It's actually going to be four though. So I'm going to go ahead and remove four threat from Mutants in the Mall, which adds that acceleration. We'll get rid of it. And we get Jubilee as an ally. She thwarts for one. And then you can use a Lightning Bolt resource to deal two damage to an enemy. So thwarting for one's pretty good. She can do two damage by discarding that lightning bolt, but she does have three health. So I could also use her to either thwart one, start working on that, or I could plink off the tough, which is what I actually think I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and attack with Jubilee to get rid of tough over here. All right, so that is my turn. I'm gonna hold on to Professor X, I think. Three thwarting's pretty good. I'm going to definitely want to get this two off, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Confusing is also very good when I'm probably going down next turn. So let's go ahead and ready up and draw up. Ooh, Royal Flush. Place a charge. Oh, and I should have placed... I'm sorry. I should have flipped over. <laughs> I definitely wanted to be hero side before I uh, ready up and draw up. And then I'm going to add one counter here, so that will charge up one of my attacks for future turns. All right, so let's go ahead and do the enemy turn. We'll go ahead and add a threat to the main scheme. He's going to attack for two. We know what this boost does, which is absolutely nothing. So we are going to take two damage. Plink, plink. Gambit staff. When an enemy attacks, exhaust it to deal one damage to that enemy. Plink. And now we are going to draw our encounter card and see what that is. Oh, a sentinel. Five health. One revealed. If target for elimination is attached to your identity, it attacks you. Otherwise, search the encounter deck and discard pile for targeted for elimination. Which makes me sad. Attach your identity if your copy is not attached to you. Otherwise, this card gains surge. While you're engaged with a sentinel minion, you cannot change from hero form to alter ego. Exhaust your identity to discard this card. All right, so I've got to get rid of the sentinel if I have any hopes of flipping down this turn, which I certainly do. I would also love to clear this abduction protocols because this will give me an ally plus let me thwart the main scheme, which seems a little important. All right, so Professor X was a priority, but I don't think so anymore. 
So let's look at charge card. Uh, deal four damage to an enemy. That seems good here. We need five. In addition to the plus one damage, you also get range, which means you avoid retaliate. If you discard two, it also gains piercing, which gets rid of tough. If you discard three, it gains overkill. So any excess damage goes from him right to the boss. So that's kind of cool. We got stealth strike here. Deal four damage to an enemy. If the enemy is defeated by this attack. Remove two threat from scheme. All right. So do I do charge card or do I do stealth strike? To do this which would do both things that i'm looking to do even though it costs one more that two threat removal is kind of worth it to me and then operative skill max one per player it's an upgrade when you thwart remove an operative counter from here that thwart removes an additional threat so it's an upgrade you could put in play keep in play all right so first things first i am going to add a counter here as my charge the card action once per round then i'm going to do a stealth strike I actually think I'm going to keep operative skill. Seems good. Uh, I'm going to discard one. Uh, actually, I'm going to hold on to charge strike. And I'm going to get rid of uh, this. So, royal flush. So, it's interesting. You place a charge counter and then you do three zero attacks. Of course, you could boost your attacks and it would boost all three of those. So, you could do like a two attack, two attack, and a two attack right now. Uh, for example, with what I'm at. But I am going to discard this to pay for Stealth Strike. I'm going to discard Operative Skill. And I'm going to discard Professor X. I'm going to do Stealth Strike, do four to an enemy. And then I'm going to boost it by one to make it five, which does defeat the enemy. And then I get to remove two threat from a scheme. And guess which one I'm picking? Abduction Protocols over here. So bink, bink. That's going to get rid of Abduction Protocols, which does have a victory two so it goes in the victory display and then i get to get a captive as, as an ally cannonball takes minus one consequential damage after he attacks and defeats a minion so cannonball definitely wants to focus on minions and then when defeated this would go in my discard pile as any other ally would i could pay two to bring him back out let's see i'm going to exhaust myself to get rid of this garbage and that yes that stays in the game does not go away forever as much as I would like it to go away forever. All right, we're gonna have Jubilee thwart for one. We're gonna have Cannonball thwart for one. Bink, bink, to take that main scheme down. Again, there's no reason to take Operation Zero Tolerance down. This threat does literally absolutely nothing this mission. So it's just a number of cards under it. Remember, if you chump, you put a card under it. And also, if you get to five, you put a card under it. There might be other things that tell you to put cards under it as well. But those are the main two ways you're going to get cards under there. But I'm going to go down to zero. What are the odds of me going to five? Two, and then it would only need to boost two. So I don't feel confident flipping down right now. I'm just going to stay up with my seven health. Hopefully be able to confuse next turn. Although I got rid of Professor X, so maybe not. But I am going to keep this charge card because I like to hit for lots of damage. And I'm going to draw some cards. Oh, here you go. We got Gambit's Armor, I got a new ally, I got Mutant Education. Oh, which lets me put cards back in my discard pile, and if I had the X-Mansion, I'd get to draw a card as well, which is sad that I don't have it, but still pretty good for a zero-cost card. All right, let's add one acceleration. He's going to attack me. Oh, I get to control the boost. I forgot about that. Well, that might change my thought process. Should I flip down? I'm not going to do it this game. But I probably should have flipped down because not only does this alter ego let me thwart, but it also kind of lets me determine what boost card's coming next, which is kind of nice. So I can hopefully prevent getting defeated. Well, that's all right. That's three damage there. I am going to exhaust my staff to do one damage back, and I'm going to take three. One, two, three. Then hopefully that X Mansion comes out here soon, too, because uh, that's one kind of free healing every turn, which I like free healing. All right, so let's go ahead and take a boost, or uh, the villain attacks you. Okay, so something to think about here. I think I'm going to use Jubilee to block this, which does some things. So that would have been four damage. That definitely would have defeated me. So thankfully, Jubilee took that. But I do have to put her under Operation Zero Tolerance which gets me one closer to losing. So after an enemy attacks and defeats an ally, place that ally face down under the scheme. There's not really a face down for her, so I'll leave her face up so we don't get that confused. 
that was my boost card or my event card. So let's go ahead and attack. Uh, when you spend this card, place a charge counter on Gambit. Well, let's not forget to do that. We'll start out by placing counter. I can get another one if I do this. So let's go ahead and do... What's Gambit's armor? After Gambit defends against an attack and takes no damage, exhausted to ready Gambit. Well, that's kind of good. All right, so we'll put Dazzler here to put my armor out. So I am all kinds of defensive, which is good because I have three defense. Let's see. I am going to go ahead and pay these two, which give me a, a counter here, to go ahead and do my superpower attack. This attack gains range. This attack also gains piercing, gains overkill. I am going to use all three counters. Why not? They're only counters to do a total of seven damage. And as a reminder, three counters is the max you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and do seven. Boom, 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 boom. That is half what their life was left. All right. So I'm going to flip over and I am going to, do I have to exhaust myself? I do to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and exhaust. I'm going to look at the top two cards here. And I'm going to use this one to thwart meaning I know this one right here will be my boost for the action. So I'll go ahead and thwart off the main scheme. And now I know he's going to scheme for two plus a thwart of one is three total plus the one that will be on there will be four, meaning unless I get an advance, not losing right away. But I do have mutant education. Play only if you're a mutant, which I am. Alter ego action. Choose up to two identity-specific cards in your discard pile and shuffle them back into your deck. And again, if I had X Mansion, even better. So I'll do that one and you know what i kind of like this one too why not double resource yes please all right so that will be the end of my turn and i'm not going to do anything with cannonball quite yet so let's go ahead and draw six cards now because we are on the other side Ooh, thieves guild after you resolve the thief extraordinaire which is this ability here exhaust your guild remove a threat from a scheme if this removes the last threat from a scheme draw a card nice I got double resources, I got charge card again, so I could hit for six, which would almost be enough, uh, but I also have breaking and entering to remove threat, uh, and stealth strike four and remove two threat, so got some options here for this next turn, but I feel like I want to get Thieves Guild out, which will let me do extra thwarting when I'm down, plus get me ready for whatever else is to come. All right, so we're going to do one, he's going to scheme for two, plus a boost of one, for three more, one, two, three, and then we will take our encounter card. Warn the others, obligation, force response. After your turn order ends, place this card face down under operation zero tolerance. Alter ego's action, exhaust your identity to discard this card. So after your turn ends, this is gonna go here as a bad card, but you can exhaust yourself as your alter ego to go ahead and get rid of this yep that's what i'm gonna do so i don't get one closer to losing here but i did now make it so that i can't use my special ability which is bad because i might end up dying if i don't have anybody to chump for me or i mean i do have three defense so i got that going for me and if i defend it all i do have my armor which will give me other bonuses so maybe that's the route we take let's see remove three threat from a scheme there's four on there so this seems good. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to pay two to remove three threat from a scheme. Get that down to one. Much more happy space. I am going to go ahead and flip up, which seems crazy at this point. It probably is. I do want Thieves Guild out, and I can pay for it. So I'm going to use Stealth Strike to pay for Thieves Guild. I'm going to go ahead and put one counter on here. Then I'm going to go ahead and pay for Charge Card, which puts a charge counter on here or I'm sorry, Molecular Acceleration to pay for a charge card. That's four damage, and then I'm going to use one of those counters, which does make it range, which avoids retaliate, which I don't really have to worry about. But I'll go ahead and put this down uh, five. With that, down to two. And actually, I was going to defeat him with Cannonball right now, but I actually think I'm going to wait a turn and do that next turn. Actually, I'm going to retaliate with Gambit Staff, so I'm not even going to use that one counter. I'm just going to go ahead and leave them at three, and I will go from there because I'm going to retaliate here, and the next turn Cannonball can finish them off, and then I'll have a fresh Sentinel to take care of but not take an extra damage or anything else. That seems a lot smarter to me than defeating him here 
when there's no real advantage to it. I guess I could do a little bit extra damage next turn, but nah, I'm good. All right, so that's two. I Oops, let's go ahead and ready up and draw up. Drawing my five. Did I get a defensive? No, but I got another charge card, which seems good. Hit and run, deal two damage, and then remove two threat. Also seems pretty good. Mutant education lets me put cards back in, which also seems good. And genius and breaking and entering, which lets me thwart. All good things. Okay, so we added the threat here. Now we're going to have Gambit attack me. That's not Gambit. That's a Sentinel. I'm Gambit. I'm going to defend for my three here. So he's attacking for two plus zero. Well, that worked out. Okay, so number one, I use my staff to plink one damage. Number two, after Gambit defends against an attack and takes no damage, which I just did, exhaust it to ready yourself. Because I defend for three, attack for two plus zero boost is two. Boom, boom, boom. All right, don't get cocky. Oh, attach the Sentinel minion without energy barrier attached and give it the tough status card. Otherwise, card gains surge. Okay, that's good. There's no met, uh, minions out. Oh no, attached to the villain. The villain gets plus eight hit points. Hey, that didn't work out. Uh, spend three lightning resources to discard the card. So here's the problem. If I don't get rid of it when I defeat him, it's coming right back. I do have all those lightning resources. I mean, I feel like it's in the cards, right? <laughs> That's a Gambit joke. That's a card game joke. That's a whatever. All right. So one, two, three energy resources to get rid of this garbage and bring them back down to two health. Then I'm going to go ahead and definitely charge up over here to get this to three. And then we are going to attack with Cannonball. Which gives Cannonball a second damage. Now, if he dies from consequential damage, that's that's okay. He goes in my discard. It's only when he blocks and dies that he goes under this card. And honestly, we only have one under there. So it's not the worst case scenario right now. But he does two damage. One, two. Which will defeat the Sentinel stage one. Let's go over to stage two and see what we get. Steady and toughness. Okay, so no more stunning or confusing. Or... It's harder to stun or confuse, I should say. The first player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a copy of Abduction Protocol Side Scheme, reveals it, shuffle, and then deal each player a face down encounter card. So, yay, he is tough, three attack. Uh, abduction Protocols is hinder two, plus two per player. When defeated, the player who defeated the scheme takes one random set aside captive ally and puts it into play under your control. You know what? It did not put the correct amount of threat on here the first time. There was only two over here. So technically, I should not have Cannonball yet. I should not have been able to clear it. Totally cheated. Guess what? Good enough. <laughs> I am not going to worry about that right now. Sorry about that. Yeah, it had the wrong amount of threat out there when I put it out there. So that is on me. But you guys get the gist of the gameplay. Sorry, that was totally cheating. But at this point, I'm just going to live with what it was. I do have charge card here, and I think I'm going to do it. So I'm going to spend two resources to play it. And I'm using all three counters to get to... Well, I don't need to get to overkill. I'm just going to get to piercing, which is using two counters. So I'm going to use two counters to get to piercing. So it's four damage plus two more from the counters. That's six damage with piercing. All right. And then I'm going to pray to God over here because I got to remove that two threat. So I'm going to flip over... And I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, look at the top two cards of the encounter deck. Discard one to use it. And then actually I do have one extra threat removal here if I need it. So I do want to remove all this threat and leave myself with just a one card. Which is possible. Give the villain the tough status card. I don't mind that. don't love it, but I don't mind it. Alright, so we're going to get rid of this to thwart for two, one, two, and then we're gonna have a zero boost on that thwart action. So it is awesome. He's one of the few heroes that gives you like foresight into what's going on. All right, we are gonna use the Thieves Guild to remove a threat from a scheme. It will not remove the last threat from a scheme. We will just remove one from this and keep my cheating ways to myself from earlier. Shh, don't tell anybody. So we are done with our turn. I'm going to get an extra card. We've got a lot of stuff going on over here. We'll see how all this turns out. But let me go ahead and draw my six cards. 
and ooh, two hit and runs, which I mean that it's an expensive card, but sometimes you need that damage and threat removal. Natural Agility is a defensive card we saw earlier. Royal Flush again does X amount of damage three times. So if there were three charges, we could do, uh, and you do get to put a charge counter on it at the beginning. Now I don't know the ordering here. So this says when you play an event. So I don't think you can use the one from this to charge it up, but it's still, if you remove three counters, you get to do three damage tw uh, three times to an enemy, which would be a total of nine, which would be pretty good right now. Even if I just get that one more charge counter on here and get it to two, that'd be six damage, which is half of the remaining life. Seems pretty good. So we'll see, that might be the, the way to go. And then this, when I thwart, removes extra thwartiness. Let me see, is this actually a thwart? It is a thwart. So I could use uh, operative skill to boost up that thwart, which seems not terrible. All right, but let's see what happens. We're gonna do one. This one gives him tough, so he does scheme for two more and gets the tough status card. Then we are gonna take our two encounter cards and deal with them one at a time. All right, we got quick strike over here. This sentinel doesn't do anything because he is, uh, because I'm alter ego. Then we got another sentinel when revealed if Operation Zero Tolerance is in play. Mark II Sentinel gains Surge, which it is always gonna be in play in this scenario. So it gains Surge, otherwise search the encounter deck for Operation Zero Tolerance and put it in play. All right, card's gonna gain Surge, which is a thing. Mark Three Sentinel. Oh, great. More Sentinels. So I feel like I'm not gonna survive if I flip up. Uh, when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for energy barrier attachment and attach it to this minion. I'm pretty sure I've seen that one already. Yep, sure have. Plus two attack and what else? What is going on with all these? Oh my gosh. Plus two, uh, minion without energy bearer attached and give it the tough status card well that one already had tough status otherwise this card gains surge oh my gosh so plus two damage still tough oh my all right so if i flip up right now i'm going to take five damage here six seven eight nine damage in order to get rid of that i have to do almost as much damage as i would to get rid of this sentinel uh considering i have a royal flush which gains piercing is there any way for me to defeat this villain? Not with what I've got going on. And unfortunately, I only have four life. I could heal. So maybe part of the answer is getting an ally out of here. Because I only attack for two. Of course, I don't think the ally is going to attack for much more. But there's three threat here too. All right. I'm going to do operative skill. No, that's not a thwarting ability. Oh, but it does let me do thwarting better. Okay, I'm going to do this. Defense, okay. I'm gonna do this to put this out here. Comes out with three counters. When I thwart, I can use one of those counters. So let's go ahead and exhaust myself to do this thwarty thwarting this. So that has one and a star. Exhaust your identity. And this has three boost. Well, I'm clearly doing that. I get to remove three from a scheme. I'm gonna remove it from that. That is a victory condition one and Wolfsbane attacks gain piercing. Okay, that's good. All right, so right now I do two, four damage. Now this one would take minus one console damage if it defeats a minion. So I could reduce the damage I'm taking and then Wolfsbane can kill this one. Is that what I do? Do I do my Royal Flush to like poke at this one, deal with this two damage and, and defend against this damage? Maybe, maybe that's what I do. Oh, so when I did my Thieves Guild ability, I do get to remove one threat from another scheme. Uh, is this considered a thwart? So could I use oper operative skill with it? Do do do, do 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 It is not a scheme, or it is not a thwart. So I just get to remove one there. Huh. So do I flip up and risk this? All right, so I'm going to do six damage with one counter on there. That's a thing. I mean, I'm not gonna live. I gotta defeat this one. All right, so that's what I do. So Cannonball attacks and defeats this Mark II Sentinel, takes minus one consequential damage uh, after he attacks and defeats a minion, which that would do. 
So that is defeated. Oh, this is going back in. What's this going to do? Exhaust your identity. Eh, that's the thing. All right, so Wolfsbane Spain is going to attack. Get rid of this tough, which does two damage. And he does have to take that consequential damage. But I got rid of toughness, although there's a toughness here now. Which I can't get rid of. Uh, search your encounter deck, so that's one revealed. So he's one life left. One life to live. I still think I do Royal Flush. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over. I'm going to add a counter to here, because that's just a free action to do. Do I do one damage? No, I'm just going all in. I'm spending all this, so I'm going to do one, two, three. Now, if this, if I am wrong, and you have to place the charge, and you get to place the charge counter first, and then you can spend it, this would be up to three, and I could do nine damage, which would have meant if I just attacked both attacks here, I would be able to defeat him. But at six damage, which is where I'm at, because I used two boost counters, I would not be able to defeat him. So I don't think that I, because it says here, when you play an attack event, remove up to that many counters. So when you play the event, you do it. I don't think it means in the middle of the event. I think it means as soon as you play it, which is right now. So boom, boom, I spend those two. Then I play it, which the first thing it says is place a counter on it. So we go ahead and do that. And then you do zero damage three times. So first instance of zero damage boosted by two is going to be here to defeat this one. Next one is going to plink off tough. And the last one is going to do two damage. I'm just going to deal with this two attacker. I don't really have much of a choice. I do have some chumpers here. Worst case scenario, I can deal with it that way. All right, let's go ahead and ready up and draw up and pray I don't die here. But even if I do die, stay tuned afterwards for uh, final thoughts. We're going to get a charge counter here. Now, this is different. When you spend the card, it's a hero interrupt. That's immediate. You spend the resources before you pay for the card, I believe. So this counter would go on before if I am not mistaken. So let's see if we can live through this round. All right, we're going to take one damage there. And then the Sentinel is going to attack me. I am going to defend for three. I uh, still have four life, so I need a zero boost. I have a one boost here. I remember that. And I'd have to exhaust my identity. Ha <laughs> ha, already exhausted. So that's one damage coming through. And then this Sentinel is going to attack for two more. So I lived through all that. By the way, Gambit Staff is going to poke back one when they attack. And I'm going to be good with all of that. And pray there's no attacks oh <laughs> shadows of the past uh for those of us who joined on uh our friday night streams you know that usually means everybody drinks oh wait those are abduction protocols that is not my nemesis uh so yep people drink whether it's water soda whatever you want to drink usually when we get shadows of the past that is a a, a, a cause for celebration let's just leave it that way <laughs> all right so let's see what this is. Uh, Belladonna has Quick Strike, which isn't great, and Toughness. So let's go ahead and get this Toughness out of the way. Quick Strike will kill me right now, so clearly there's going to be some chumping. After Belladonna attacks and defeats a character, place two threat on the main scheme, which is going to trigger some other stuff. So let's go ahead and do all that. So I'm going to go ahead and block with Cannonball. But ink. so that's three damage. Defeated goes under here so now we got two cards under here uh remember four means we lose but also add two threats to the main scheme boom boom which puts us up to five and then when it's up to five where do i put the top card of my deck top card of their deck and then remove five so that's what happens when shadows of the past comes bad things happen to you thankfully it didn't deck me this is a card we've seen before Oper uh, operative skill so let's go ahead and deal with the scheme that comes with it. So that's the Assassin's Guild. Force response. After an Assassin minion attacks and defeats a character, place two threat here. So I believe this is an Assassin. Let me remember the order here because I do think reveal your set aside Nemesis minion and put it into play. That quick strike would have triggered right away before this scheme comes out, so I'm not going to add two threat here. Then you reveal your side scheme and, and all that. So we got two damage here. Uh, so that'll be down to seven. So if we could do seven damage, that would be good. 
Well, thankfully for us, I believe that we can, uh, which makes me happy. So first things first, I'm gonna add a charge counter here. Charge the card. Then we're gonna play Molecular Acceleration to give me two resources and place a charge counter to pay, play charge card. Deal four damage to an enemy for this attack. If Gambit's throw the card ability removes at least one counter, two counters, three counters. So I'm gonna have range, piercing, and overkill because I'm spending all three. So that's four plus three is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Almost good enough. Good thing we still have Wolfsbane here. Wolfsbane is going to attack for two. Boom, boom for the victory. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Gambit in some final thoughts. The last thing we didn't see is Creole Charmer uh, and Expansion, of course, which... I think it's cool that cards are triggering off of X-Mansion now. Uh, there were definitely cards in my deck. I can't remember which ones they are. Um, but that said, if you have X-Mansion, draw a card or whatever else. That's kind of cool. Uh, Creole Charmer. Uh, it's an Alter Ego Thwart. Remove three threat from a scheme. If it removes the last threat from a scheme, confuse the villain. Well, that would have been useful earlier when I was face down. Uh, that way I could have stayed down longer. So let's talk a little bit about Gambit. I think Gambit is super fun. I've only played with him twice so far. So again, this is initial impressions. Uh, but both times I've played, I've had a lot of fun. I love the dynamic of being able to thwart when you're on your alter ego. Not only thwarting, but this Thief Extraordinaire action not only removes threat, but again, removes bad cards from the deck. If I had been able to do that, the turn Shadows of the Past came up. Uh, well, no, 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 because no. really you're only going to get to see the boost card. But that's super important information when you are, especially, I think he's going to do really well in protection because of his guild armor, which is going to let him ready after he defends for all the damage that com is coming in. This will let him, on Alter Ego side, predict what card is going to come up in this deck next. Not predict it, but actually pick it as well as removing one. Now, there is a little cost, of course, though. You do go through the villain deck a little bit faster because of this, but it's still, I mean, I think, obviously, you not only get the thwart, but you also get the um, the pre-knowledge of what the boost is going to be for the next action or activation. I think that's worth it for sure. So Gambit's been really fun. I love the dual nature of Gambit. It, he's pretty straightforward, but... He kind of does what you want him to do. Like if he's alter ego, he's doing the the thieving, removing threat stuff. So he's not really out of the action, even when he's on alter ego, which a lot of times your hero feels like they're out of the action. Now you are paying a cost to this also because you have to exhaust yourself, which means you're not recovering, which is part of the reason I'm down to one health now. But overall, super fun hero. Uh, I definitely see myself coming back over and over to Gambit. I love this charge up mechanic where you're you know, spending actions. You can really boost stuff up for later, but they don't let you abuse it too much because the max you can remove is three counters to do plus three damage. Uh, but I do love how it synergizes, especially with charge card really good card and then some of the other stuff that comes in here like mutant education putting two identity specific cards back plus if you have x mansion you get to draw a card i mean it's just fun to be able to get those signature cards over and over characters that want signature cards are going to love this mutant education and honestly who doesn't love their signature cards <laughs> some of the best cards it feels like you can put that signature damager back over and over again again you have to be a mutant to be able to do that and a lot of times uh, that's only going to come on your alter ego side well and this is alter ego action but it does limit you to the x-men wave so far so overall really fun Definitely check out Gambit, especially if you like the theme, if you like the character. I didn't know much about Gambit before playing this, but I love the fact that he's thieving and it really does feel like he's a thief, right? That was his profession before he became the superhero. And it does seem like this Black Widow-y type. And I love the, the fact that they added cards that help Black Widow as well and let her do stuff on Alter Ego side. It's all kind of fun. I love the Justice cards that came out in this set and I really like the hero as well so that's it for now but don't forget join us every friday night for live marvel champions on the one stop co-op shop streaming channel so it's one stop co-op shop streamed join us there and we will see you on friday night and we'll get to chat live thanks bye